PE Discover Las Vegas 2025. Dave Nicholson, Matt Kimball, VP and Principal Analyst Data Center at wow. Uh, more insights. That That's sounds quite, impressive. Yeah, you, very you impressive. Who is that guy? Very impressive. Well, yeah, yeah. More, <laughs> more impressive. Welcome to the Hybrid Cloud Store Woo! show at the uh, HPE Discover. And I am surrounded by geniuses and <laughs> we're going to play some talent Matt, here. Matt, we're going to so. play stump the chump here. Oh man! Oh yeah! Well, uh, well, well, I'm the chump. So all right. I was, I, 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 <laughs> that's, that's an honor. That's an honor. <laughs> so Matt, first off, you yeah. said it in the warm up. The great VM reset. The great VM reset. Yeah, Antonio brought that up in his keynote. So I'll, I'll ask, you know, kind of throw this out, see if you all agree with me. So. No, we're interviewing you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you caught on to my tag. <laughs> so it's it's interesting to me, right? Um, and and Keith, we've talked about this at, at other conferences and in the past as well. There's all this turmoil going on in the market, right? Um, you've got this company, I don't know if uh, your viewers know that VMware got acquired by Broadcom. Oh. Hmm. I know, who would have thunk, right? They, and, they uh, talked about another hypervisor company. Do you think that was who, who, who Antonio no, was referring to? No, no, no I, think you're, I think you're mistaken, Matt. He, he was referring to traditional hypervisors. Oh, that's right, traditional. Trad, yeah. trad hype, trad <laughs> hype, for short. TH. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's a lot of turmoil. And it's funny, we were in a round table discussion just yesterday, talking to a lot of uh, CIOs, IT directors, who's using VMware who's considering or exploring options, every single hand went up, right? It's cost, it's, it's, uh, it's cost, it's cost, it's cost, and it's uncertainty. It's long-term, where's this thing go? And it's proprietary, right? Everything is closed off. What IT is looking for is that more open um, virtualization solution, a virtualization solution that's not going to, that's not going to be deployed at the cost of other technologies across the enterprise, um, and, a techno and a virtualization solution and a cloud solution that you can grow with. Um, and so that's where I think HPE is coming in and where Antonio is coming in with the great VM reset. Everybody is looking for an alternative. Do you want to keep going or you guys want to jump no, in? No, no, I, I mean, I, I, I think, I just wonder, um, I mean, Kind of jokingly, I've said a few times that if you're a CIO and your CEO asks you what your AI strategy is, and you say, "I think I'm going to switch hypervisors," you're fired, <laughs> okay? Because that that that's you know that's below the line in terms of what yep. anybody cares about. So I think if HPE is going to lead with it's the great VM reset, forget about that. Yeah, sure. It's good messaging to say that they have a solution for yep. that. Yep. I think that's going to come along with people focusing on AI and hybrid yeah. cloud, yeah. the ability to do things like run inference on premises yeah. and stuff like that. So, so I mean, maybe some a little nuance to it. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how many people it's going to capture. And yeah, everybody says they want to move, yeah. um, but the numbers show that not as many have as both of us would have agreed would have happened by now. Well, I think there's, I think there's a, a counter to that. And that is, I am an enterprise IT organization. I have 20,000 VMs supporting my, my business. I have, I have built muscle memory around this thing that has been, become the control plane for my data center. And there is no way I can move off of that thing in six months time. It is a longer term project. So I am going to extend a license here and I'm going to plan and execute a migration strategy over here. Here's the thing, and this ties into AI. Before you can do anything, this is my Matt Kimball's opinion, right? Not others. I think before you as an enterprise can even think about AI, you've got to think about modernizing your organization, your enterprise, and your IT operations. That's, there's three parts to that. There's people, there's process or operations, and there's product, there's technology, and they're all intertwined. People is the long tent in the pole, right? It's cultural, it's education, it's everything. Um, but that starts in product, right? And product influences operations and operations influences people. So I think there are three legs to that stool, but I think before you can even get to AI, you gotta start thinking about your organization from a modernization perspective. And that's where hybrid cloud comes in. Hybrid cloud, 
By the way, let's remember, AI is not the only workload in the data center, right? It is one of many, many workloads that exist. Um, and yes, I want to make it easier to deploy or deploy and, and activate or operationalize AI across my organization. Um, but I also want to support every other function that's going on. And I want to reduce cost. I want to reduce power. And I want to be able to take all of that excess and put it to the higher value projects, such as you know, how I deploy a Gentic AI for this workflow or generative AI for this chatbot or whatever it might be. So, so you, you people were just clapping in the background for that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. For, Thank that, you. for that take, Matt. One of the things I like to console CIOs, CTOs, architects on is not changing too much at one time. Sure. You want to fail any project, I don't care if you're talking about AI, yeah. ERP, really doesn't matter. Too much change in the enterprise at one time will lead to failure. Yeah. So as people are looking at the big VM reset, they're looking at hybrid cloud adoption from a people and process perspective. They're looking at AI uh, governance and adopting AI. How are you looking at this, this, this yarn of problem and saying yeah. enterprise leaders and enterprise vendors should focus on X. What is X? Yeah, so outcomes. Um, for me, and I, I go back to when I was in IT and I was never a good practitioner, so I kind of failed upward and uh, I became a very good executive, but not a good practitioner. But my mantra was always start at the, I think I mentioned this in our pre-show, start at the right and work left, right? What are your outcomes? What are you trying to achieve? And work back from there. Which, 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 by the way, headline HPE, they call that ambition. <laughs> what is your ambition? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. what is, yes, yes. yes. It's critically yeah. important. I'm yeah. sorry. What, no, that's yeah. great. Work backwards. And to what you're saying, Keith, um, you got to break that down into smaller consumable bites that f fail fast, right? And fail uh, fiercely, right? Don't be afraid to fail. But you have to, you have to engage, you have to embark on these projects in a way where when those mistakes happen, and they're going to happen, they happen in every IT project I've been a part of, right? Failure happens. It's not bringing down your ERP system. It's not bringing down the mission critical apps and workloads that are powering your enterprise, right? So think small, look for those early victories. Um, you know, map it out. I always say there's a, there are two kinds of vectors. There's visibility and there's, there's uh, import to the company, right? There's the stuff that every executive's got their eyes on, and then there's the stuff that really matters to the company. Find that right balance where it's gonna have the right amount of eyes on it, um, but it's not gonna bring the company to the knees or your, your organization to its knees you know, when those failures happen. That way you get those early wins. Because here's, in, you've been in IT, you've been in IT or IT consulting, right? Here's what happens, you start these projects, six months later, funding goes away, mm. right? I mean, it ha it's, it's probably happened in your life, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I owned a landscaping company until two weeks ago, so I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. But you know, hybrid cloud has had a history. Sure. Uh, I would argue, um, and coming from you know the infrastructure side of things, um, we started talking about hybrid cloud because we were terrified of cloud cloud. Sure. Killing yep. us. Yeah. And so we said, hold on a second. Uh, yeah, I know we called that a science project, take your toys, stay away from it. Now we admit it's ready for some of your enterprise workloads, but at least let us have some. Yeah. At least for at least sure. at least long enough for us to retire, maybe. Yeah, sure. That was that was the hope. Yeah. And I'd say there were some dark days of hybrid cloud where where we talk about things like cloud bursting. Yep. Hey, you know, on the eleventh of every month, yeah. let's move a petabyte of data into the cloud and do, it's like, no, that's yep. never gonna happen. Right. I'm, and I'm, old enough, I'm old enough to remember HP. HP, now HPE yeah. bought Eucalyptus. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. yes. So now here we are, jump forward, and oh my, hybrid cloud makes a lot of sense. Not for the least of reasons, because people are concerned that their crown jewels, their data, they just got over the idea that storing their data in the cloud was actually safer than in their own data center. Sure, yeah. Because psychologically that doesn't make sense, but yeah. then it's like, okay, yeah, I admit it. Google or whoever is better at storing my data than yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah. But inferencing it, training a model with it, 
No way. Right. So people want to do that on premises. Therefore, on premises stuff remains. Yeah. Yet people are already sold on the benefits of cloud. Yeah. So hybrid cloud here to stay. Keith thought Keith knew it forever. Yeah. Um, but almost by happenstance. So against that backdrop. Kind of the killer app, if you will, right? I believe it is. I believe it is. Against that backdrop, do you think that's enough of an incentive to get leaders in a company to allow IT leaders in the company yeah. to do technology refresh at the infrastructure level, yeah. which we all know prepares you for AI, but it doesn't look like AI on right. day one. Right, right. And is it a fair argument to say that if they do that, they'll free up capital to do the shiny object AI stuff. Do you see that uh, resonating as a, as a valid argument? It is a, it's an absolutely valid argument. The question is this, is it possible for Keith Townsend, CIO extraordinaire, or IT director to convince the C-suite that that is a worthwhile investment? I, here's what, I, I, this is, it's the absolute necessity to get to that end state, you know, that kind of nirvana, which is agentic AI is running the enterprise and everybody is just sitting around and you know, drinking lemonade and eating oatmeal cookies and saying life is great, right? The question is, how do you get there and how do you, how do you convince executives? This goes back to, and this is part of the problem. We've spent forever, and I was an IT vendor, I was on the IT vendor side as well. We spent forever talking about TCO, talking about ROI, talking about these savings that will be realized, we promise that we never go back and validate or never go back and quantify after the fact, right? Um, so, you, you, so I think there's a little skepticism that goes along um, with going to a, say, a, 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 a board that's kind of controlling the governance control board that is looking at IT expenses and operations or, or projects and saying, yay, verily, move forward or don't, right? That's part of the challenge is some of the, th some of the ways that I would sell IT projects in the past were on the early side and we never went back and proved them. So when you say, I'm going to save you X percent of dollars by doing this project, people looked at, look at it with skepticism. But there are real hard savings, or uh, by hard, I don't mean difficult, I mean concrete savings that you achieve. When, when you look at IT infrastructure, in that round table we were at yesterday, there's a gentleman who has a bunch of HPE servers. They're between five and eight years old. He's getting ready to refresh them. And he's saying, we're gonna do a 12 to one consolidation ratio. Holy heck, how much capital does that save me? Yeah. How much from licensing is that gonna save me if I'm using HPE virtualization stack? Uh, how much is that gonna save on power and cooling? I mean, there are a lot of elements that go into this that are real, real concrete. And I think it's more destruct demonstrable today than maybe it has been in the past. Um, so I think, you've, but you've got to build that package and go to, in, in Florida we call it the t technology review uh, work group, go to the TRW and you got to sell the stuff and you've got to, and it helps to have the vendor behind you um, with those numbers. I think HPE actually today did a great job of showing what those savings could be. Yeah, one of my more popular uh, takes has been this blue money versus green money. <laughs> like when when a vendor comes into your office and says you're we'll save you a hundred thousand dollars and i go to my cfo and i say we saved a hundred thousand dollars he's going to say well did you uh release that those funds back yeah, to you? <laughs> and if you did not you did not save me a hundred thousand dollars yeah and this is you know this is the great debate we are challenged some of the same people who are going to be implementing the uh, big VM reset yep. are the same people doing my AI projects. Yes. And we could go on for easily the rest of the show talking about this problem. Oh, yes. Because this is the problem. We talked to your colleague, Will Townsend, about networking, which is the glue yep. to all of this. But we've run out of time. You're kidding the me. The clock is telling me. Oh, Leave him wanting more. Yeah, the, oh. the, 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 so we did not stump the chunk. No, we you did, did not. We failed to. <laughs> so... For my co-host, Dave Nicholson, Matt, thank you for joining us. Fabulous conversation as always. You, folks, you got a sneak peek in on the types of conversations that the three of us have all the time. We're going to continue these conversations. Stay tuned for more 6.5 coverage.